Welcome back to a Munchausen's Proxy, where we are entering the new year wondering if Bob Iger, chief executive officer of the Walt Disney Company, is retarded. Not in a clinical sense, mind you, for I doubt even the lapdogs and yes-men of the Disney board would keep him on if he was. No, in this instance, I mean in a business sense. The actions of the Walt Disney Company over the last few years have not been those of a company run by intelligent and rational businessmen. What is the purpose of the Walt Disney Company? To gain profits by entertaining their customers. Who, generally speaking, are the customer base of the Walt Disney Company? Families. They have built up their brand over a century of being the number one family entertainment brand across multiple divisions of the company. And what has the Walt Disney Company spent most of the last few years doing to its customer base? Pissing them off. Pissed off people do not give you money. Not voluntarily. Piss them off bad enough and they search out your competition and give them their money. And that is what has been happening at the Walt Disney Company the last few years. Before I really get into the first part of my examination of whether or not Bob Iger is retarded, let me start by offering up a caveat. I am well aware that companies like BlackRock and Vanguard subsidize the lunacy of corporate America these days. They have been pushing the diversity, equity, and inclusiveness agenda through their ESG scores for companies wanting their investment money. For those who are not up on Wall Street weasel speak, ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance Scores. They are basically a social credit score, a la Communist China, for companies. In order to get good scores that companies want in order to get World Economic Forum plaudits and BlackRock slash Vanguard investment, you have to buy into the Environa agenda fully, the racialist agenda, and the racial gender quota agenda vis-a-vis your executive suites and board of directors. It is basically a Marxist assault on the corporate system that makes companies look at better ways to serve customers and substitutes in a stakeholder capitalism where companies look to garner attaboys from people and groups who do not even own stock in the companies in order to get money from such groups as BlackRock and Vanguard. If all of that sounds complicated and conspiratorial, the scary thing about it is that they are doing it in the open without even trying to deny it. There is video of the CEO of either BlackRock or Vanguard, I can't remember which, spelling out their plan to force behavioral changes in people through this system in order to meet their ideological goals. Now make a point of, that's, a, that's an investment criteria for you. Well, behaviors are going to have to change, and this is one thing we're, going to, we're asking companies. Uh, you have to force behaviors, and at BlackRock we are forcing behaviors. Uh, 54% of the incoming class are women. We, we added four more points in terms of diverse uh, employment this year. And it, if it, it, you know, what we are doing internally is if you don't achieve these levels of impact, it, your compensation could be impacted, okay? We're doing the same thing. And so it's just, it, you have to force behaviors. And if you don't force behaviors, whether it's gender or race, or just any way you want to say the composition of your team, you're going to be impacted. Goals summed up by the World Economic Forum's catchphrase for this project. Quote, you will own nothing and you will be happy. Unquote. It is in this environment that Bob Iger has been making some of his decisions. That does not explain away all of them, however. So let's look at the retardation of Bob Iger, and consequently the Walt Disney Company. To start, let's begin with what made Disney what it once was, animation. Walt Disney started his company and built it into a juggernaut on the back of an animated mouse by the name of Mickey. Over the years, the stable of Disney characters expanded making them the first name that popped into parents' heads when it came time to pick entertainment for their kids to watch. 
and the Disney Princess brand became the driving force in the profits for the company. Everyone from Snow White to Moana built up the Disney brand as largely a girl's brand as they moved through the decades. Something has gone awry, however, at Disney Animation. For years, a Disney animated movie was a guaranteed hit. The first sign of trouble was probably when the budgets for the animated movies started routinely going over $100 million. A $100 million movie has to make at least $300 million to break even because theaters do not show movies out of the goodness of their heart. Contrary to what the entertainment media seems to think when they declare a movie successful when it clears its budget at the box office, that number does not take into account marketing or the fact that theaters get a cut of those box office receipts. In the domestic market, studios get about 55% and about 45% overseas, with movies shown in China only bringing back 25%. So a movie that makes $100 million in China is really only giving the studio $25 million. The budgets were not the only problem, however. Since 1999's Fantasia 2000, there have been only 11 Disney animation movies that can be deemed successful. Lilo and Stitch, Brother Bear, The Princess and the Frog, Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph and its sequel, Ralph Wrecks the Internet, Frozen 1 and 2, Big Hero 6, Zootopia, and Moana. And two of those are borderline. The Princess and the Frog probably either barely broke even or might have even lost the studio money. Tangled probably did lose money, but it was still very popular. It did, however, have a ridiculous budget of $240 million, meaning it needed over $700 million at the box office to break even. It brought in just under $600 million. The characters in the story were very good and left it mark, however. Making Tangled an IP Disney has toyed with expanding on with a full sequel. They have done shorts and cartoons using that IP, showing its cultural footprint. The Princess and the Frog left a cultural footprint that was more forced, mainly because the Disney princess in this case was black and Disney very much wanted that demographic covered. They even went so far as to remake Splash Mountain into Tiana's Bayou Adventure at Disneyland, a move that was less than popular with Disney's park customers. 11 movies out of 25, including the two Borderline movies that have still left a mark, is not a good record, given the budget seen for Disney animation in the last two decades. Prior to those 25 movies, the previous 10 Disney Animation full-length features were all hits, some massively so given the relatively minuscule budgets compared to the most recent movies from the studio, and the last four from Disney Animation have bombed. Raya and the Last Dragon, Encanto, Strange World, and Wish were financial disasters for Disney. Raya and the Last Dragon came out during Disney's appeased China phase that they went through a few years ago. This included putting out the less than successful Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings under their Marvel Studios label, and including Rose Tico in The Last Jedi, even though Kelly Marie Tran, the actress who played Tico, is Vietnamese. To Hollywood, however, Asian is Asian very often, and they were trying to make up for the fact that Finn was a black character of prominence in the movie, and China is less than thrilled by black characters. It was the reason Finn was de-emphasized on the Star Wars posters in China, and Chadwick Boseman's face was covered on the Black Panther posters. Much the same thinking went into Raya and the Last Dragon. While Asian culture has many stories that would be enthralling when told in animated or live-action form, Hollywood prefers to tokenize characters rather than put in the effort into telling good stories involving Asian culture in recent years. Disney is no different. Encanto was sort of the same thing only for Hispanic culture. Encanto had the misfortune to come out in 2021, while some of the country was still locked down from the pandemic, and it was still not a movie that would have done well without that circumstance. The story was mildly ridiculous and had issues beyond being made for less than creative reasons. 
Objective assessment of the script would either have gotten it rejected or handed off to someone to polish or rewrite it. As it was, though, it created a film that bombed. Strange World was one of Disney's disasters of 2022, and it failed because the story was beyond dumb and filled with identity politics when it should have been a children's movie. There was nothing to Strange World that would entice families to go see it en masse. It also came out in the wake of Disney thrusting itself into local political issues on the side of people who wanted to discuss sex with kindergartners. And that is what the political debate in Florida boiled down to. Are you for or against someone other than parents talking to children in elementary school about sex? Disney was for fans of the playground who think sexual indoctrination of young kids was a good idea. This also came after a video of Disney executives bragging on Zoom calls about having not-so-secret gay agendas when it comes to making Disney content. Um, the showrunners were super welcoming, Meredith Roberts, and like the, the, our leadership over there has been so welcoming to like my like not-at-all-secret gay agenda. And so like I, I feel like I felt like it was, I mean, like maybe it was that way in the past, but I guess like, something must have happened in the last like like they are turning it around they're going hard and then all that like momentum that i felt like that sense of i don't have to be afraid to like let's have these two characters kiss let's in the background this are, like i was just wherever i could just basically adding queerness to like to, if you see anything queer in the show i'm proud of but like I, I just was like no one would stop me and no one was trying to stop their grosses for various divisions felt the repercussions, including Strange World, which includes such themes in the film. And Wish, the Disney animation movie that was supposed to be a celebration of Disney's 100th anniversary, came out last year. It was a movie that displayed everything wrong with Disney without even trying. It was a story about a kingdom of roughly late medieval technology wherein the king has the power to grant his people's wishes. However, he only does so if he thinks the wish is good for the overall kingdom. That sounds reasonable. And it also makes him the bad guy in modern Disney. The problem comes when Disney's writers introduce the quote-unquote protagonist, a strong female character of color in a kingdom with the demographics of, completely coincidentally, Los Angeles, California, rather than something more realistic. This plucky female is apprenticed to the king for... reasons? She finds out he does not grant most wishes because he is the one who decides if they are good for the kingdom. Typically of modern times in the West, said young plucky female character thinks she knows better and wishes on a star that she could change things. The movie quickly goes downhill from there. It was supposed to be a celebration of Disney animation and the 100 years of the Walt Disney Company's efforts to bring entertainment to the world, particularly kids. It failed on every level. The story was crap. The animation was crap. The callbacks to Disney's past projects were crap. It was the epitome of all that has gone wrong at Disney wrapped up in one retarded film that should never have gotten beyond the script stage, never mind released to the fanfare of a 100th anniversary. Instead of doing movies that take from classical literature or history, like Snow White, Cinderella, Aladdin, or Pocahontas, or build new stories like Lilo and Stitch or Big Hero 6 that will entertain kids and parents alike, no matter who they are, Disney animation has become infested with agenda, pandering, or outright political and or social indoctrination. And that is only logical since activists have infested Disney in all divisions and at all levels. This was encouraged by Bob Iger. Many of the worst offenders were brought in by Iger or his direct minions. And the purpose of these people wasn't to make good family entertainment, at least not foremost, it was to use Disney for advancing political agendas. For Bob Iger, he had political ambitions. Both before and after the 2016 presidential election, he thought about running for president as a moderate Democrat, 
using his time at Disney as a springboard to what he would do with the country. Of course, a moderate Democrat in California is no such thing in the rest of the country, except maybe New York City and the rest of the urbanized Northeast, and Chicago. The work Iger did to position Disney as an ally to the left would have been his resume for the Oval Office. Unfortunately for him, 2016 became a referendum on the state of the country under Democrat rule, and much of the country did not like the direction the country was going. Donald Trump became the middle finger from the American people to those in power, including those in the business community and Hollywood like Iger. 2020 was no better. The pandemic made sure that election cycle was completely buggered, and Iger's turn at the helm of Disney was already visibly turning south. He bailed so that his fall guy, Bob Chapek, would take the hit for things Iger set in motion, as well as any consequences from the pandemic shutting down businesses and entire nations. To a certain degree, that worked. Unfortunately for him, he decided to come back and failed to write the course of the company. The last year's failures at Disney are all under his reign, and many of them were projects that were started while he was still in charge. On his return, he began giving lip service to the idea of getting Disney out of politics, reining in on the wokeness in its projects, and returning Disney to being the family entertainment company it began as. Alas, recent events added to those over the last year have shown otherwise the latest being the hiring of an activist journalist and documentary filmmaker for the next attempt to save Disney Star Wars. While I will get to the Disney Star Wars in another video, putting Charmaine Obeyed Chinoy in charge of a big-budgeted Star Wars film when all she has ever done was documentaries about women's rights in the Muslim world, cartoons in Pakistan, and two very bad episodes of Miss Marvel is lunacy. The only reasons any outside observer can conclude she was hired for is because she has the right politics, her melanin count is high, and she has lady bits. Videos of her talking about how much she doesn't like people who don't have lady bits makes you wonder if Disney and Bob Iger actually want to make money with Star Wars any more than they do any of the other sections of Walt Disney Company that I will talk about in future videos. But that is for those videos. That is all I have for this one. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video, and comment down below. It helps out the channel and is much appreciated. Until next time. Tschüss.